Farmer Hands rubbed his eyes. Did he see that right? Everywhere, as far as he could see, he saw strange white objects on his farmland. When he checked a few days ago, everything was fine. When he got closer, he realized the white objects were in fact hundreds of eggs. He had no idea what they were or where they came from. He was worried that they might be dangerous, so he decided to call the local wildlife experts to come and investigate. Not much later, he heard a strange but familiar noise. Hans could not believe his eyes and immediately drove back to his home to wake up his wife, Bonnie, and his two daughters, Mary and Giselle. They all rushed outside together, and all of the girls were stunned by what they saw. With tears in her eyes, Bunny said to her husband, Is this what I think it is? The field was dead, and the corn was gone. Instead, there were eggs scattered all over the place. It looked like they were almost ready to hatch, but Hans got up on his tractor and was about to destroy them all when his girls intervened. They begged him to spare the eggs. His wife was right in stopping him. Right now, they had no idea what they were. If they touched the eggs, it could result into more danger. This is not something he was willing to risk, especially not with his wife and children around. But what are they? And what can they do about it? To calm down his girls, Hans suggested something else that completely shocked them. He agreed to not harm the eggs, but at the same time, he also had to make sure his family stays safe. But what suggested Hans? And why did he burst into tears when they finally hatched? Hans has two daughters, Mary and Giselle, with his wife, Bonnie. They live on a farm where they grow vegetables, like corn and herd sheep. It is a simple life, and it isn't often that something out of the ordinary happens. So you can imagine the shock on Hans' face when he woke up this morning. Hans woke up as normal and put on his overalls. He always lets his wife sleep in a little longer than he does. He made breakfast for the family, so they could eat as soon as they woke up. When everyone finished their breakfast, it was finally time for Hans to step outside and feed his animals. He had his buckets of food ready and walked to the chicken coop. His chickens acted differently than usual. They ran around the coop, and it seemed like they were scared of something. But what? Something was agitating the chickens, and Hans was determined to find out. Hans then noticed something else. One chicken was missing from the coop. Where could he be? What happened to the chickens? A mix of emotions washed over Hans. Confusion, curiosity, concern. Was there someone, something else in the farm? Despite these questions, Hans knew exactly what this meant. He ran inside to get a towel in a box and put the deceased chicken in there. How could it have died so suddenly? At this point, there were more questions than answers. Still, Hans didn't think it would have been anything more than he could handle. It was important that he kept his composure. Then suddenly, he heard strange sound. He listened carefully but couldn't place where it came from. It couldn't be far because he could hear it. He couldn't identify what the sound could be. It almost sounded animal-like. But what kind of animal could it be? After feeding all his animals, he went into the barn to get his tractor ready. He was about to drive away when he heard a loud scream. It was Mary. Dad, stop. There is something on the ground there. He jumped off immediately to see what his daughter was pointing at. He was surprised at what he saw. His daughter too looked very surprised. He immediately felt bad that he wasn't as thorough in checking around. But at least they found the source of the noise. Or was that it? A sick little kitten was on the ground in front of one of the tractor's wheels. Mary immediately offered to care for the animal, and Hans agreed. He had never seen marks like that before on an animal. Before he could even wrap his head around what had happened, his other daughter Giselle came running outside the house. Dad, you must look at the cornfield, she screamed. Yes, Giselle, I was on my way now, Hans sighed. He noticed small white dots in the distance, but didn't think much of it until he came closer. What in the world was this? Where did all his corn go? What were these things growing on his field instead? Mary and Bonnie also came running toward the field, and their mouths fell open when they arrived. Eggs? Bonnie said, stunned. How is this possible? They did look like eggs, in shape and form. But were they really eggs? He was about to answer her when he heard that strange, familiar sound again. This time, it felt much louder. He quickly scanned the surroundings to see where it could possibly be coming from. It looked like the eggs were almost ready to hatch, but Hans wanted to get rid of them, 
so he got up on his tractor until his drills intervened. They jumped in front of the tractor and refused to move. Hans suggested something else to calm down his girls that completely shocked them. Well, girls, the crops aren't savable anymore, but maybe we can still save the eggs. Hans said. His suggestion seemed to have instantly worked. The girls' faces lit up, and they jumped in the air of joy. Hans silently wished they were actually pets and not pests. But first, they had to figure out how to keep all the eggs warm at once. The eggs were all over the field. They needed to harvest them one by one. Where could they keep them all and keep them safe? There were about 20 eggs scattered around the field. Hans was scared something would happen to the eggs if they moved them, so he was thinking of a different idea. Of course, he also still had to consider that the eggs may not contain friendly creatures. They must be handled with much care and caution. He suggested they put a large black tarp over the eggs. This way, they keep dry if it starts to rain, and the tarp would keep them warm under the sun. Yes, this does sound like a great idea. Not long after, their daughters returned with a large black tarp. Together, they stretched the tarp over the eggs and put rocks on the ends to secure it. The following morning, Hans woke up to a weird noise, but it wasn't the same as yesterday. This time, it sounded more like giggles. Within a second, Hans knew what it was, and he shot up. It was still very early, but the girls had already gone to the field. They couldn't wait to see if the eggs had hatched over the night. Their giggles filled the air, breaking the silence of an otherwise dull and peaceful morning. His thoughts turned out to be true. His girls had woken up before him and went to the eggs. It's four in the morning. Mary and Gazelle's smiles faded as they looked at their angry mom approaching. She was still a bit upset because this wasn't the right time for them to be out in the field. They didn't know if there were any dangerous animals at night. Especially Hans could not be prouder of his girls. But this moment of happiness turned quickly after hearing a loud crack. They all turned around towards the sound. Were the eggs hatching? Were they finally going to find out what's in those eggs? They collectively held their breaths, awaiting what will happen next. Then suddenly, they heard a loud crack. The girls jumped up in shock, thinking they had smashed one of them. But it was something else. They have taken such good care of those eggs, so they all thought something would go out of the egg. Giselle looked closely at one of the eggs and noticed a big crack in its shell. Mary was actually quite scared. She had heard stories of baby birds hatching and then being unable to fly away. Bunny tried to explain it, but it was in vain. So she took Mary inside to care for the sick kitten instead. The kitten had to be fed any minute. The distraction worked. Mary stopped feeling sad and was able to focus instead on feeding the cat. I. It had been two days since they found the eggs. The tarp had done a terrific job of keeping the eggs safe from the weather and predators. More eggs started to crack, and it could be any minute until they began hatching. On the fourth day, it was finally time. Hans went to check on the eggs when he noticed one was already empty. He frantically looked around him, but the baby was nowhere to be found. Was it a bird or a reptile? Did it fly off or slither away? The wait felt longer than expected, and the girls almost lost their patience when finally, two more eggs started to move. They cracked and shifted. Slowly but surely, a little animal came out. Their eyes widened in shock and awe. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. Hans couldn't believe his eyes. Out of all the animals, he never imagined these to come out of the eggs. The animals were little baby peacocks. Hans always cared for peacocks when he was little. He even had his own peacock, who was his best friend. He loved their vibrant colors and the way they moved gracefully. Hans couldn't stand giving the animals away and wanted to keep them all, but Bunny disagreed. There wasn't enough room on their farm for 20 peacocks, so they decided to do something else instead. As much as he loved peacocks, 20 of them were just too much. That was the only option, and Hans knew this. Bonnie and Hans kept two peacocks on their own farm and brought the other 18 animals to a peacock sanctuary. There they had all the freedom they deserved and would get the best care. And the girls also loved taking care of the peacock. The animal sanctuary was the best place for the peacocks. It provided them with a safe and comfortable environment where they could live and thrive. The sanctuary had plenty of space for the peacocks to roam and explore, as well as plenty of food and water. 
The staff at the sanctuary also provided the peacocks with medical care and attention when needed.